I was being okay. interviewed. Yep. And they were asking me about Human Giant. And they're like, is there any plans to get that streaming? I'm like, oh, we really wish there are. But the last time we checked, Paramount or Paramount or MTV said, we don't have the drives. And that's like our hard drive. That's like our proof yeah. that the show yeah, That's existed. everything. And yeah. yeah. And we're like, that's like the equivalent of your master's. Yeah. And we're like, what do you mean? They're like, we can't find it. We think it's in a storage facility in New Jersey. Years have passed since that conversation. Yeah. And so I say this in an interview and I get a, a DM from someone and they're like, hey, um, I'm going to look. I'm going to take it on myself. And I was like, so somebody from within the company or just yes, a person somebody, in the world? Somebody within the company is like, I work okay, over at MTV. I'm going to go. Yep. And I was like, all right, great. I don't hear back from that person for two months. Mm -hmm. Another DM. I found your drives. Whoa. And I'm like, Whoa. He was like, they were on the floor in a janitorial closet. Amazing. Right? In the 1616 or the Times Square you building. You know what that could have been? It's so easy like, to imagine yeah. like those drives in 10 years popping up on eBay the same way that Miami Connection yeah. popped just up. You know what I mean? Like them? They could have been lost to time and then just re unearthed and been like, oh, we found the show, you know? Yeah. We, so he finds them. He's able to... Cata you know, catalog them. Yep. They are now being stored. Also, hilariously, like when we do Human Giant, which is like 2005 or whatever that was, yep. the like we're like nine giant like lacy hard drives, and now yep. literally both seasons on one like tiny hard drive. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. So on like was, a thumb drive, essentially. Yes. So yeah. So he basically uh, they are they are stored. They are there. Season one is out on DVD. Season one was streaming on Amazon years ago. Can I ago. pitch you something? Please. Can I pitch you something? Yeah. I want to pitch you a show right here, right now. Oh, I can't wait. Live on Twitch. Let's do it. The show is, it's you guys. It's, you know, yeah. you, uh, Rob, Aziz, and Jason, yeah. the, the members yeah. of Human Giant. It's a movie about you guys recovering the micro drive. Like, 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 but in this case, the micro drive contains all your episodes, but right. you frame it like it's the MacGuffin in an action movie and, and you've got to get the mic and it's, it's all sketch action sketches oh. to get the micro drive to get your content. Oh man, that would be, I love it. It's that. a I sketch mean, movie with a spine uh, of a, right, of, um, like of, a of real, an action like, movie, I love uh, you know, that. by the way, you know, this whole story about, well, I don't know if you know this. Human Giant is not good with hard drives because after we finished the show, one of the things that we agreed to was we weren't going to do a third season, but we were going to go make a movie instead. That was how we we're going to figure Got out it. how to do our thing. So we all meet and we work really hard uh, for a couple of weeks on this idea that we really love. Uh, Jason at that point was... Oh, I do know this story, I think. Does yeah. this story involve you guys being on vacation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Jason uh, <laughs> Wolner, who directed Borat 2... Uh, one yep. of the uh, one of the the biggest parts of Human Giant, but you wouldn't recognize yep. his face. Um, directed and and wrote uh, some of the best stuff. Uh, so, writing it down, writing it down. We go to San Diego Comic Con, all of us, uh, and we're staying further away. That's like at that time in my life where we we were all broke. We couldn't stay yeah. in a hotel. We didn't actually even know where I'm we sorry, were. I'm sorry, but Paul, you had just done two seasons of a, a successful show on MTV. Weren't you rich? <laughs> I remember. Weren't you I remember, weren't you dripping in those MTV bucks? I remember literally thinking to myself, like, I'm spending a thousand dollars on a couch, and I was like, this is. Oh yeah, I'm rich Decadent. now. Like I was Decadent. like, this is great. Yeah, <laughs> I still had a I had a hard time getting rid of that couch like four years ago. Like I was like, oh, I, I, under know, I, don't, I understand. <laughs> I understand. There's still there's things in my house that I've had for a million years that I'm like, why would I replace this with a, a more expensive <laughs> version of it? This still works. Hey, it's perfect. It's a comfortable couch to sleep on. Uh, so wait, why are you sleeping on the couch, Paul? Oh, because it's a pull-out couch. I, I oh, was gonna okay. go. You know, why are you sleeping on the pull-out couch? Do you oh, like you when, have a when, bedroom in your home? Oh, when 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 my parents would come over, I would. Ah, okay, couch okay, okay, got it, got it. I'm a respectable gentleman. Nice, uh, yeah, nice. I didn't have, you know, I mean, again, I, I thought you were, I thought you were like a sleep on the couch guy. Like you're, you're getting in trouble too much getting oh, no, sleep no, no, on no. the couch. I mean, I have slept on the couch because I gotten in trouble. Have you ever in your relationships did you ever sleep on the couch? No, no. In my relationships, I never ended up sleeping on the couch, but definitely ended up like sleepless nights, both of us angry in bed. Yeah, but that, like on a like let, let's stop talking about this. Let's just go to sleep. But then both of us just like 
you know? Yeah, and I, what I think my my instinct is is like I can grumble, but I'm like I just prefer to be like. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I, you know I, what, I understand. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go down there, and it's a comfortable couch. Mm-hmm. It's not like uh, yeah, it's I not gonna it. be too yeah. So uh, so Jason's taking notes. We go to this house that's kind of far away from the San Diego Comic Con location, but it's like on the beach. We think it's nice, but it's also as we get there, like a little scary. Like we we see like like uh, intravenous needles and stuff in this like little walkway going into the side of the house. Like, you right, could, you very good. well easily could have been in a diabetic neighborhood. Yeah, exactly. And I'm always thinking about that. Cause I mean, always because what I know about people with uh, diabetes is that they're terrible polluters. They're just, it's like mad men. Yeah, season they, two they litter, girl. they litter yeah. constantly. <laughs> and so they, that's right. <laughs> putting, putting type one and type two diabetics on blast. Stop littering. <laughs> So they, so we go, um, they just, they throw it out the car windows. It sticks. My kid got stuck with a needle. Oh yeah. Well, you know, for them, they're like, you know, they finished doing their business and they're basically like, I'm holding a dart. I might as well use it as such. Yeah. And they, and they're tiny. Uh, Oh, and yeah. So, and they're so efficient. So the, the first that we're there and, and again, we're saying this like kind of nice house, a big, it's a big house. And um, and this is before like Airbnb and anything like this. So we were renting a house. It was a little bit weird. Um, and we're in this like in the pool. We're just kind of talking in the pool. And Jason Wolner says like, "Hey, did you guys see something like just move in the house?" And we think he's like doing a bit. Like yeah, he oh there's no. I swear to God, I just saw a man like walk through the bedroom up there. Like sure, okay, enough, enough. So and and he's like, no, I'm being serious. We're like. Okay, like, fine, fine, fine. And we just kind of blow it off. So we go back to our rooms that night, you know, in, in the house. Everything's fine. We go out to Comic-Con the next day. Um, and we come home super late at night. And we come home at night. I remember I go into the kitchen, and uh, I go to turn on the TV. And I'm like, huh, well, there, there was a TV here, right? Oh, I was, no. like, on the wall. And I was like, <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember it. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, Jason's like, has anyone seen my computer? And then Hubel's like, uh, guys, um, is my camera down there? Like everyone called oh, from different like rooms. at once. Yeah, oh. Everyone missing something, and then we like started to look around the house, and every piece of electronics was just ripped, like ripped off the wall. Every TV from every room gone. Every computer, Amazing. all of our computers were there. Just four computers, like fump, fump. Everything just taken, taken. And so out that, and that was the contents of the movie you guys right. were writing. So he been writing, and this, this thing. is this is at a point when. There's there is no, no cloud to back it up to. No there is G-Doc. no, yeah, yeah exactly. Nothing. Yeah. So we have like this two or three weeks of work on this movie and we're like, fuck. And you know, that. Yeah, so now every one of our computers is stolen. We're so bummed out about it. And, and then we're in that zone where, and this is a like very par for the course with Human Giant. We were like, well, we can never recapture what we were doing in that three weeks of writing. So fuck it. Like we just like, yeah. we're just like bailing on it. Which is so crazy. And, and so we bail on it, and then we're like, ah, it was a good idea. We should maybe like go back and, and try to do it. So we we got right, let's start it again. So we started again. We have like a week of writing on it. And then uh and we we were getting it together. Jason and Aziz go to do something. Jason leaves his car door unlocked. His computer gets stolen from his what? car in Griffith Park. So both times that we tried to oh. write it, and both times we had these like large docks. Just completely stolen, and then we were like, "We're That's done. We're giving up." That's such a bummer. And and so we just all just gave up on this movie because it was like something is telling us not to do this. Like this is yes. like we we are we are reading the the tea leaves and we're not going to do it. Uh, anyway, this guy found. Can our I ask DVDs. you a yeah. question? Mm-hmm. Do you think? Do you suspect foul play? Do you think that someone I think was, it was trying the to whitest stop kids you know? The whitest kids you know. I was just going to say, I literally, that's where I was, that's where I was going with this. Do you think the whitest kids you know were like, we got to shut these guys down? They were, we they can't were have after. these guys out here. They want to like, do a movie. We got to shut this fucking down. They were making that calendar girl movie at the same time that we had our <laughs> deal with Fox 21 and they knew it. By the way, someone's like, iCloud, use it. It wasn't an option back then. It didn't then. exist. It wasn't That's, I yet. said that already, you I motherfuckers. Know. Yeah. There was no cloud. There was no. It Imagine was a, a world, you time. motherfucking idiots. There was no cloud. You couldn't back stuff up. Yeah. Fuck you. It wasn't this Ugh. easy. So anyway, we found that we found the episodes, which are great. And what we've been pitching, 
or I mean loosely pitching, is yeah. we have about like 60 th- – that's a high number, but about 60 sketches that are unedited because we ran out of time. And we're like, oh, well, I'm, we I'm, I will say I'm in a sketch that was never aired. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's so many stories of that. Like, and yeah. we, we shot with great people. And the only reason why that you're not in it or, or these sketches were not edited was because we simply ran out of time. Like I remember yeah. at the end, I was at again at Comic-Con and we were sitting all in a room deciding. I feel, like, like, I feel like a lot of your stories are like subtly kind of promotional material for Comic-Con. Look, I don't want to talk I'm about- a little like, S- I'm a little sketched out by how much you're talking about SD- San Diego Comic-Con TM. SDCC is going to be so much fun this year. It's going to be virtual, but we're going to have all the fun, <laughs> the, the autograph alley. We're going to do it virtually. We're going to have the panels <laughs> virtually. Uh, so, um, but I remember what we had to do is we sat down with this giant like Excel spreadsheet and we just were like, all right, we only have room for like 10 more sketches to edit. This yeah. one, that one, this one, that one. And we were we were horse trading these sketches. So we have all these sketches and we're like, I wonder if it would be really fun if like someone like Shout Factory or someone just paid us to do a special where we could, paid us, I mean, just to, so we could edit some of these things again and then yep. talk around them. Like some of them don't work. Like we had this sketch with like Kristen Schaal. There was a movie called Grizzly Man where it was a guy who lived with like the, yep. the bears. Werner was, Herzog movie. Yes. yes. And so Ian Roberts from UCB came in one day and pitched a vet in the room. One of the funniest things it was called Ant-Man and it was like a full, like a fully realized sketch short about this guy who lived with the ants and it was hilarious. And when we shot it, it was not funny. It was so not funny that yeah. I shot the beginning of it. And I was like, I don't have a handle on this character. Aziz, do you want to do it? And Aziz was like, I'll do it. And Aziz started doing like reshoot, like literally reshooting the sketch. Yeah. And we're like, we don't know what this is. So but, I mean, uh, like, my question is, like, in making a sketch show, I feel like there must be a certain ratio of sketches that don't make the oh yeah c- the leap between a scripted sketch and a filmable. Like that in the filming, you realize this is structurally unsound or this doesn't work the way it did on on the page. Yeah, absolutely. there must be a lot of that. That is because you're you're starting. You know, I just know from talking to you guys, you guys would start with a huge number of potential sketches, you know, yeah. to get you to the sketches that would be inside of the seasons. I mean, one of the things that was so good and bad about the show is we had no idea how to make a show. So mm-hmm. we like didn't do anything. Like I remember all of us speaking to each other after the show and being like, oh, that's how you make TV. Like we like, you know, mm-hmm. I was like getting change in the middle of the street. Like, you know, we yeah. were we were shooting like we were stealing shots, doing multiple things like we were just running ragged around New York and just being like. And what we were trying to do is shoot 90 sketches a season just for that ratio to be like, well, yeah, if, if 40 work, then we're in good shape. Then great. Then you've yeah. got a season. So that's like the, the goal and the dream is at one point to get yeah. them streaming um, cause we have all the music rights cleared and we had like great bands and we did all the right things for it to be able to be released on streaming. Cause that was like right at the beginning of when you had to c- care about that. That's the reason why the state yeah, had to sure. dub everything. Like if you watch a state, like they, like cause the state back in the day when it, they were doing their show, like they had a ama- like the cranberries and stuff like that on their show, but they couldn't do that. They didn't yes. get the rights to the Cranberries songs. They just no. Kinda- it's because they, it fell. I, I think I assume it fell under the licensing deal that MTV had. Exactly. And then once like, you know, the reality world kind of kicked in, they were like, oh, we yeah. got to like license this properly. Well, that's so anyway. the problem. You know, that's like why there's there's whole records that aren't available. There's whole TV shows that aren't available simply because of music rights yeah. more often than not. You know, I mean, I think yeah. one of the reasons 30 something was unavailable for so long and maybe maybe even my so-called life is because they both had a lot of contemporary music that would be prohibitively expensive to now license to use ongoing that was the same thing with sctv too because it's sort of like you just didn't you didn't think about like oh the resale it airs on tv and then it's over like even that was it like schmidt's gay that that great sandler farley snl sketch where that's the beer commercial but like oh i don't know oh it was like it was like this thing where (laughs) they go like like sandler and farley are there and it's like this is your house. It's like a really dumb house. Like, wait, yeah. till you see the pool? And they like they turned the pool, and it became like this like Bud Light commercial. But it was like all these like really hunky guys, and like they're like sure. up their glasses. But they had like an ACDC song or or some yeah. really popular song, and it was so great 
but they could never uh yeah. they could never play it again. So they, they could never ne- play it. Yeah, exactly. When you see it now, it's like a, a, a sound alike. It's never as good as that original like Schmitz oh, game. That's a Van, it was a Van Halen yeah. song, yeah, people say. Uh 